Good day, everyone. I am Christine, the moderator of, for this webinar. I welcome everyone to this webinar, 21 CFR, Part 11, FDA Guidance for Electronic Records and Signatures Using a Computer System Regulated by FDA. I would like to introduce our presenter for today, Caroline Triano. Caroline Triano has more than 40 years of experience in computer system validation and compliance in the pharmaceutical, medical device, tobacco, and other FDA-regulated industries. I would now like to hand over the floor to the speaker. Over to you, Caroline. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. I'm Caroline Troiano, and we're going to be talking about 21 CFR Part 11, the guidance from FDA for using electronic records and signatures with FDA-regulated systems. Thanks for joining. We're going to talk about what we mean by GXP systems, FDA-regulated systems, a little bit about regulatory oversight, and then we'll dig into Part 11 with an overview first and then dig into the compliance issues. We'll also cover data integrity because 21 CFR Part 11 and data integrity guidance from FDA are very similar or at least there are some overlap areas. Uh, we'll talk about computer system validation, the newer computer software assurance, CSA, and the differences and uh, benefits, and validation planning. We'll then go into requirements testing, requirements traceability matrix, uh, and each of these areas, these phases of validation, we'll talk about the 21 CFR Part 11 compliance requirements. Other documentation to support validation, maintenance and support once it's a validated system, being operational ready. And then we'll touch on vendor audit and industry best practices, and we'll end with the Q&A. So GXP, are the this is the predicate rules from FDA. It's defined as good variable practice. It can be good manufacturing practice, good laboratory practice, or good clinical practice. These are examples of typical FDA-regulated systems, GXP systems, and the FDA operates on key premises. If you didn't document something, you didn't do it. You get no credit. And if you could have committed fraud, they will assume you did commit fraud. Just the opportunity to commit fraud means you've committed it. With FDA, there's no recourse. You may be innocent until proven guilty in a U.S. court of law, but you're guilty until you prove your innocence through your documented evidence in FDA world. Now, this is software and computer warning letters. And here we see uh, this is warning letters by fiscal year. This is one about recall events. Now, this is an important slide because it deals directly with 21 CFR Part 11. So let's look at Part 11. By definition, uh, FDA says an electronic record, it's a combination of text, graphics, or any type of uh, image or anything in digital form that you create or do anything with using a computer system. The electronic si signature is a compilation of specific symbols that when chosen and executed, uh, they will be the legally binding equivalent of your handwritten signature. Now, the handwritten signature, the scripted name, legal mark, this is uh, handwritten and executed or adopted with the intention, the meaning of the signature, to authenticate writing in a permanent form. Just like the handwritten signature, the digital signature or electronic signature has to also include the identity of the signer authenticated against their credentials and also the integrity of data verified. So Part 11 is a law and it defines, you have to, as an organization, define the criteria under which your electronic records and signatures are considered to be accurate, secure, authentic, trustworthy, reliable, confidential. And this can be summed up very succinctly. Now the guidance for electronic records and signatures was issued in 1997. So in 2003, the FDA came out with the scope and application guidance, and it all comes down to them not knowing what to do. Well, they knew what to do. They didn't know how to do it and how far they should go. And that flexibility of interpretation, that led companies to back off uh, for quite some time. So determine in advance as well whether you're going to rely on an electronic record or a paper record to make a decision or to perform regulated activities. So the features of your system, the other assurances. So the audit trail, you know who did what action and when. And again, you have to show your evidence to FDA. Now the date and time stamp, again, has to be synced up with International's Meridian Time, GMT. Now identity management and assigned roles. 
Now, segregation of duties. Users have to clearly define separate roles uh, for actions that they take on a record. With security, if you are transferring it over the internet, you want to use a firewall and encrypt it. Never allow a system to automatically enter default data if you bypass a field. Now, backup is important. You have a full backup and recovery system because you want to protect it uh, against data loss. And if you're making copies, you want to produce them contemporaneously with the actual data entry. Change control is very important for computer systems and validation. Training everybody who's involved with using the system, supporting it in a validated state, or uh, doing validation work. They all have to be trained accordingly. FDA inspection and audit. So every record is subject to inspection based on predicate rules. The copying has to preserve the content and meaning of the record. Now, there are many standard operating procedures that are related to validation. There are three key uh, SOPs for Part 11 compliance, system administration and configuration, user administration and management, and document control. Now, system administration and configuration is where you define the system configuration the settings to set up the system, security administration, none, none of the functional areas but the system configuration. User administration and management means creating user accounts or account types. So some questions during inspection under formal change control. Now the areas most risk during inspection is the security and access, secure, uh, lax practices, the testing and validation, not validating systems at all or doing an insufficient job of it. Training and expertise with documentation, not doing a, a risk-based approach, no risk assessment. Here we see a 380% increase from 2010-2012 from that period to the 2013-15 to 15 period. So what's data integrity? Complete, consistent, accurate data. It's many more, more things than that. Attributable, legible, contemporaneous, original or true copy, and accurate. Those are the components for Alcoa. That you're meeting that requirement or that requirement is meeting the acceptance criteria. So data integrity guidance, uh, it was first drafted in 2016. It was actually issued in December of 2018. Common deficiencies. Now, failure to prevent unauthorized access or changes to data and have these adequate controls to prevent omission of data. Now, what can you do? Ask the questions. Is the software and hardware suitable to perform the task? You should find that out during validation. Now, the guidance for validation came out in 1983, 41 years ago. So validation applies to records in electronic form, created or modified uh, or done anything with uh, based on agency regulations. For every electronic system, you have to show it's consistently performing through uh, multiple rounds of testing, for example. And this is that IT change control SOP. Once it's in maintenance or production mode, you have to lock down your system. When you're validating, you have a validation plan, you have high-level user requirements in business terminology, and when the user gives you that information, it has to come from your users. You'll do an installation qualification. So the GAN5V model shows, it illustrates visually, computer software assurance. So the document-centric waterfall approach, CSV, traditional computer system validation, is a hindrance to efficient software development, testing, and release. So industry focused on that compliance mindset, treating everything equally. Every requirement was tested to the same degree as every other requirement. Modernization of life science industries. We saw how FDA is trying to improve their own uh, infrastructure and efficiency. So CSA also focuses on critical thinking. How requirements are classified by risk and tested is also different. Uh, moving requires a shift from documentation to critical thinking. What's critical thinking? It's asking basic questions. Questioning assumptions don't take anything at face value. So in some cases, with a low risk, you might have a simple test that's appropriate. So GAMP5 guidance also it has the V model, and I've actually uh, adapted that for use with Agile. So we saw the GAMP5 V model for waterfall. In validation in your plan, you want a strategic approach. You want to consistently validate all your systems at your location that are GXP. Now, validation plan includes the consideration. These are all subjective. At least the first two are subjective. And GXP uh, systems, risk-based approach, they can improve your methodology. Uh, it's industry best practice. The risk-based approach. And then in each risk scenario, you would evaluate that and determine a risk rating. You have to define them. Now, requirements. Unique, uniquely identified, testable, feasible. 
There are many sources for requirements. Key requirements, anything to control changes, anything about operation and maintenance implemented to meet Part 11 or data integrity. Now, testing, as I mentioned, IQ, OQ, and PQ. And these are all phases of the testing that you will do in validation. PQ has to be done by subject matter experts. When you test, if there's a defect or deficiency noted, you have to follow up, investigate root cause, remediate, retest. There are RTM, as I mentioned, your summary report, your validation summary report. Here's your GXP system inventory. There should be training, and you want to make sure people are trained sufficiently in how to use the system. Now, industry best practices, somebody who has results approved online, but make a decision from paper, and they never looked at verifying the paper against the original. No training deficiencies. System of record and data of record have to be clear for making decisions. Inventory of GXP systems, more robust testing where higher risk positive and negative scenarios, archive, backup, restore procedures, and these have to be tested during validation. For Part 11 and for data integrity, make sure you do test those requirements. Thank you, Carolyn. That does conclude the session for today. Thank you, everyone, for participating. You may all disconnect now. Have a great day ahead. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Have a great day.